All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Here we go again. We got another passage breakdown for you guys. I post out a lot of these videos, guys, and I do it to help you guys. All right. The more practice you do, the better you're going to get. Look at all these passages that I did. Look at all of them. Okay. And I broke down every single one. I'm practically a master at this point. You guys can be a master too. It's pretty simple. Just do what I do. Follow the proven path. All right. Here we go, guys. As always, guys, before I break it down, do the passage on your own first, meaning read the passage on your own first, and then answer these questions on your own first, and then hear me break it down. See where you went, see where you went wrong, see where you went right. Let's find out. Okay, so this is question number 18 here. Okay, also pause it whenever you need to. Alright, pause it whenever you need to. I don't know if I did that already. But this is question 18. Write down your answer. Okay, 19, write down your answer. 20, write down your answer. 21, write down your answer. And that is it for this passage. It looks pretty interesting. So it's going to be a really good practice. Okay, let's do this. Remember, the MCAT is easy. It's easy. Okay, I'm going to show you how easy it is. Within a single biological system, the pH within certain organs can vary by a few pH units or orders of magnitude in terms of actual hydrogen ion concentration. Um, they just told me exactly what pH is. <laughs> okay, orders of magnitude in terms of actual hydrogen ion concentration. That's what pH is. Okay, <laughs> so I'm not going to highlight anything in this first sentence here. I already knew that. Even within the cell, Individual organelles maintain different pH levels, optimized for or created by their functional roles in the cell. Mitochondria are known to function optimally at a slightly basic pH level. I'm going to highlight this because I didn't know this. This stuck out in my head. All right, I made the highlight, and now when I continue reading the passage, in the back of my mind, I'm going to remember that mitochondria function optimally at a slightly basic pH. Okay. Deviations from this value may be indicative of malfunctions within the organelle, and strategies have been sought to identify a biologically safe indicator capable of preferential accumulation in the mitochondria and presenting spectroscopic markers that change according to mitochondrial pH within the range of interest. All right, so this is a very long sentence for just a simple meaning here. Okay, the meaning is simple of the sentence. Basically, they're saying that they found a marker, okay, that can, well, not they found a marker, but they're trying to find a marker where it can show, it can, it can be like, hey, pH has changed. A marker that shows the pH changes, all right, with accumulating in the mitochondria. So it has to go in the mitochondria, okay? There's two things. One, it's got to say, hey, the pH changed, and it's got to change the color, because when we see a change in color, we're going to see and say, hey, the pH changed. And two, it has to go to the mitochondria. Okay, it has to accumulate in the mitochondria. Okay, so like they said here, preferential accumulation in the mitochondria. It's got to go to the mitochondria. Okay, and it presents spectroscopic markers that change according to mitochondrial pH within the range of interest. Okay, that's a long, test, long sentence, but it really meant something really simple. Okay. One such recently reported compound, dubbed mitoph, dubbed, I guess they dubbed it, okay, is the product of linking two photoactive fluorophores. All right, so how did they make this? They link two active fluorophores, one of which is pH sensitive and the other pH insensitive into one compound. Both mitoph and the reaction responsible for its pH sensitivity are shown in figure one. Cool. The mitochondrial targeting ability of the molecule is driven by the cyanide moiety, okay? So the targeting, remember guys, how so we have to get that molecule on the mitochondria, okay? That ability is driven by the cyanide moiety. So I'm highlighting this to make a mental note in my head that the targeting ability, the accumulation in the mitochondria is driven by the cyanide moiety, okay? The group, cyanide group, okay? while the pH sensitivity results from the reversible ring opening of the spiral lactone moiety. Okay, so the two things, remember how I said, one is accumulation and the other is indicating the pH changes. Accumulation, cyanide moiety, and the pH sensitivity 
is from the ring opening of the spiral lactone moiety. Okay, the ring closed spiral lactone moiety shows no absorbance or emission. However, when opened, the unit absorbs light with the wavelength of 490 nanometers and emits at 520 nanometers. Okay, so only when it's open, we see the uh, fluorescence here. The cyanide moiety absorbs at 560 and emits at 600. Okay, so cyanide, 560 to 600. And the uh, spiral lactone is at 490 and emits at 520. Okay, some numbers here. That's it. The changes observed in the respective emission with changing pH are shown in figure 2a and 2b. We don't look at these figures yet. We only look at them when the question asks. We don't want to waste time. Okay. Since the cyanide group is largely unaltered by pH changes in the range studied, okay, the ratio of ring closed versus ring opened mito pH can be determined by scaling the normalized ratios of the emissions at 520 nanometers and 600 nanometers at any given pH. Okay, so this is how they do it because, all right, because it's unaltered by these ranges here. All right, we can also determine it by scaling the normalized ratios. So looking at the emissions here, okay, look at the emissions and we can tell what's going on here at the pH. That's basically it. This value normalized EM520 over EM600 represents the ratio of ring open to ring closed forms of mito pH, ring open to ring closed forms. Figure 2C shows a plot of this ratio against pH. All right. So here it is against the pH. Here is the 520 to 600, which also means, you know, ring closed to ring opened. Okay. So this is what's going on here. All right. This part is a little, little tricky, tricky, but nothing too crazy. Okay. And then these figures here, we only look at them when the question asks. Okay. I already, I'm looking at these figures and I'm like, well, what is that? What is this curve here? What does that even mean? Okay. So if I spend my time trying to analyze these, I'm going to lose some time and I'm also going to forget what I highlighted. And that's also, and I'm also going to, since I forgot, I'm going to have to go back to the passage and try to reread and that's going to waste time. And before you know it, you're running out of time. Okay. So let's jump into the questions here. Which of the following values best approximates the PKA of mito pH? All right. Here is the, um, the curve here shown here. Remember this looks like what, what does this look like? What does this look like? This looks like one of those titration curves, you remember? All right, they're not putting base here, but they're putting pH here. Okay, and they're going to the fluorescence here. Remember what pKa is? pKa is the value, okay? It's the pH value when you have base equaling acid. Okay, so add a pH of right here, Okay, the pH like 7.5, it looks like right here. At this point, you have from here to here, from here to the midpoint, we have the conjugate base. Okay, the acid turned to base. It got deprotonated because of the high pH. And then from here to here, we have the acid that is yet to become deprotonated. Okay, so it's protonated, 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 protonated. Uh, we attach, we approach the pKa value. So now it's deprotonated, deprotonated, deprotonated. Okay. That's what happens here at the pKa. The pKa is the pH value where you have half acid and half base species. That's the definition for it. So we just look at the graph here. That's it. 7.3. Bam. Right there. That's it. Easy peasy. I told you that MCAT's easy. At pH values just below four, Mito pH was no longer found to specifically accumulate in the mitochondria. Oh no. Which of the following is the most likely cause for this phenomenon? All right, let's see. At pH levels below four, the amide bond in the organic linker is deprotonated, giving excess negative charge to the compound. If we are at a pH of below four, this means we're very acidic. That means we have a lot of hydrogen ions in solution. That solution filled with hydrogen ions is not going to deprotonate it. It will get the species in the pH, in a pH of, you know, four or less than four, will get protonated. 
Okay, there's not going to be deprotonation at a pH of below four. That is very unlikely. Okay, so A is wrong. At pH levels below four, the hydroxyl groups on the spiral lactone moiety are protonated. Remember what we highlighted before about the accumulation? Remember the two things? One was the accumulation, you know, the targeting, and the other one was what? It was a pH sensitivity. All right. I remember and I highlighted, and it's okay if you forgot a little bit which one was which, that's okay, but we highlighted, okay? The mitochondrial targeting ability was driven by the cyanide moiety, while the pH sensitivity was by the spirolactone. So if we're trying to accumulate in the mitochondria, we need to target the mitochondria. We have to get in the mitochondria, okay? We need to find the mitochondria out of everything in the cell. So that's from the cyanide moiety, not the spirolactone. This is talking about the spirolactone, not the cyanide, so this is wrong. This is talking about the cyanide here. The cyanide group can be protonated in solutions with pH less than 4. That is correct. Okay, that's correct. Let's keep going. At pH values below 4, the spirolactone, eh, no, not spirolactone, it's the cyanide. Okay, therefore the answer is C for 19. How many degrees of unsaturation are lost or gained in the base-induced transformation from mitoph to its photoactive ring-opened form? It's over here. Here is it. So unsaturation. Unsaturation means, you know, double bonds. Okay, remember, think of fatty acids. Okay, a saturated fatty acid has no double bonds, and a unsaturated fatty acid has double bonds. So let's look. All right, how many double bonds we got here from here to here what's the degree of saturation changed here well here it looks the same it's pretty much the same up here pretty much the same um, okay here's where it's different the two molecules here we have one two three four five six seven eight nine ten double bonds and here we have one two three four four five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. So we gained a degree of saturation. However, we lost a ring. Look, we were ring and we lost a ring. Ring and lost a ring. If you lose a ring, you're losing a degree of saturation. I'm sorry, you're losing a degree of unsaturation, okay? If you lose a ring, you're losing a degree of unsaturation. So we lost a ring, so we lost a degree of saturation, but we also gained a degree of saturation by gaining a double bond. So in total, the degree of saturation was unchanged. Easy peasy, guys. The cyanine portion of the compound absorbs radiation with a wavelength of 560 nanometers, okay? Yet emits at 600 nanometers. Which of the following is the most plausible reason to explain the discrepancy. Guys, you should know how fluorescence works. Okay, fluorescence works by absorbing a high energy photon. Okay, it gets excited and then emits a lower energy photon. All right, in terms of wavelengths, it's going to absorb a low wavelength. Okay, get excited and emit a higher wavelength okay so this makes sense that it absorbs a lower wavelength and emits a higher wavelength the molecule emits a more energetic photon no it does not it emits a lower energetic photon the molecule emits a more en no it does not it emits a lower energetic photon the molecule emits a less energetic photon than it absorbs because the excited state of the molecule is more highly charged than the ground state I don't know if it's charged. I don't think it's charged. I think it's just I think it just has more energy. All right, and this terms of energy doesn't really have to be, you know, positive negative charge. It does have more energy though, so I don't know about C. The molecule emits a less energetic photon than it absorbs because the excited molecule can lose energy through vibrational processes prior to phototonic emission back to its ground state. This word just means heat. Okay, you're losing energy through heat, you're losing energy through vibrating. Okay, and that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's positive, negative when it absorb, absorbs the energy. It matters more about losing some energy and then coming back down. Okay, when it comes back down, it emits a lower energy wavelength. 
In order to perform the chemistry, where did my highlights go? What the heck? Oh, is it, is, that's it. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much it, guys, for this passage. All right, let me know what you guys think. Comment down below if you found any of it confusing. All right, if you guys are interested in working one-on-one -on -one with me, Inside MK University is the absolutely fully loaded program that will make sure that you hit your target score. I've gotten plenty of pre to hit their target score. They're all celebrating, okay? Everyone's happy because they hit their target score. All right, all you have to do is just follow the proven path in MK University. There's nothing else in the market like this. So I really suggest for you guys to enroll if you're serious about, you know, hitting that target MCAT score and only taking the MCAT once. Okay. You don't want to take it more than once. That's a whole lot of time here. So if this is going to save you time. It's pretty easy. All you got to do is just follow what I tell you. Okay. In there, you have access to me. You can ask me questions anytime you'd like. So you have that and you have, it's, it's fully loaded. Okay. Trust me on this. If you want more information about it, go ahead, click on the link in the comment section, fill out the application, schedule an interview. And if it seems like you're a good fit, then I'll ask you to join MK university and hit your target score, all right? But let's check if we got all these right, okay? Don't worry about this, okay? I just clicked, um, I just went through the FL without answering anything. So there's no correct, no incorrect. This is blank here. So let's just check our answers, see if they're all right, okay? So 18 was C, C, okay. 19 was C, C, and here's the explanation if you guys would like. Okay. 20 was D. Oh, my bad. D. Okay, 21 was D. D. They were all correct. That's how you do it, guys. That's how you get them all correct. So I'll see you guys in the next video.